Coach, I mean, these kids, I guess the upperclassmen were in a 4-3 two years ago, a 3-4 last year, and now you guys are kind of going to be doing a little bit of all of that. How does that transition maybe come a little easier with when they've kind of experienced maybe a little bit of everything at this point? You know, a lot of times football really is just learning language because you're, you're you, there's a lot of concepts and things that they carry over and it just might be one system call it this, the next one calls it that. So it, more than anything, it's learning the terminology, the language, and, and you know, it's not just about um, what you do, it's more about how you do it. So um, one thing we've done throughout, throughout this entire quarantine process and all the Zoom meetings and everything else, I tell you what, like we, we've gone over and over the install, you know, I don't know how many times, at least through meetings and through talking through it. So now we're actually getting a chance to, to go out and do it on the field, which, which is great. We've been waiting for that. But our guys doing a great job with, with learning it. And, and, you know, you're talking about a veteran player who has experience in a couple different systems. That, that certainly helps him. All right, Parrish, go ahead. Hey, Coach, who are some of your players who are getting more reps right now? because Sam Williams is away, he's unavailable. Who are some of those guys in that mix? Yeah, I think it's, it, you know, today was day one, and, and a lot of times it's like anything else, when, it, when a guy's down, it's, it, it becomes everyone collectively as a defense all step up, and, and, and we're cross-training several guys, not, not just at, at that particular position Sam plays, but we're, we're cross-training a lot of guys because we're really preparing for, number one, we want to see guys play different spots. We haven't had a chance to see these guys practice until today. And number two, we're preparing ourselves to, okay, maybe there's a week throughout the season where we have several guys out at one spot because of, of COVID or whatever else. And it's like, you've got to have answers ready. So, you know, I, I talked to the defense about it just this morning, again, about how important it is to, to be a guy that can cross-train, learn more than one spot. And so, you know, th there's a combination of, of several guys um, that, that are filling in where, where Sam was. What's your take on, on your defensive line? Obviously, there, there were a lot of snaps lost at those interior positions. So what do you see there as you guys get started? Number one, I, I just see guys with a great approach. I, I love how, how that group's working. Um, I, I think, you know, they're hungry and, and they're, they're, there's good and bad to everything. So obviously, when, when, you, when you lose the guys that played a lot of snaps, you lose those snaps. So that's the negative part of it. But I think the positive is, the other guys see opportunity. You know, you're a football player. You see, okay, man, like like the guy that played the majority of the staff last year is not there anymore. This is a great chance for me to go go earn that spot and, and show what I can do. And so I think a lot of times that that, that really creates great competition and practice. And and so far in our walkthroughs, meetings, and, and practice today, that, that's shown up that way. All right, Neil, go ahead with your question. Yeah, DJ, kind of following up on what Parrish just asked. I know you've had a lot of year day one, year one at different places, Maryland, Michigan, that kind of thing. Have, have you ever gone into a place where the front seven was kind of this inexperienced? Ooh, um, I'd have to really think back. I, I mean, obviously, I'm sure at some, some point I have, but uh, I, don't, I don't know like a, a year off the top of my head right now. But I, I think the, you take every one of these experiences in their own individual way because even when you say, you know, this group has X amount of snaps or X amount of starters coming back or whatever it is. They're, those things are still all individually based. You're, you're dealing with different personalities, different situations and, and, and everything else. So um, I, I think it's hard sometimes just liking things to, oh, this is like that year. Because I think sometimes as a coach, if you do that, you know, you may find out down the road, but you made the wrong, you know, um, you had the wrong perception about what was going to happen, or how guys would react or respond or whatever it is in a good or bad way. And so um, that's how we'll, we'll approach this and take it. I, I like the approach our guys have had. I know maybe snap wise, not as experienced as some other places or other years, but um, they really are taking ownership in it. And we have guys, you know, like, like Ryder and Jaquez and, and Momo. And, and I mean, there, there's a whole group of guys that are really like taking ownership in what's going on and being great leaders and, and setting the tone for the whole group. All right, Ben, go ahead. Yeah, DJ, to kind of piggyback off of what Neil was talking about, you've been through so many day ones um, and knowing that it's going to be much different on the last day. What do you look for on that first day and, and what were maybe some encouraging things or did Ole Miss meet the expectations, your group meet, you, meet the expectations of what you expect to have from them on day one? Yeah, it, every day one I've ever been a part of is like, you know, come off the field feeling like, oh, you know, we, we, we have so many things to work on, which, which is true, but it's, it's day one. Um, I, I, to me, all you're looking for day one is really as coaches and as players collectively that we, we're all 
like upholding the standard and, and setting the standard for how we're going to do things in terms of running to the ball, being urgent about what we do, you know, in our communication, it going from drill to drill at practice, like all those little things make the biggest difference. And you know, I, there's plenty of scheme stuff to clean up and we'll get to all that. But, but to me, you've got to learn how, how to practice and like what, what is our standard as a team, as a defense to how we operate, how we handle our business. And like day one's your first day to go, go put that on film and go show it. And then day two becomes the first day you get the chance to go, you know, clean that up, improve it, you know, talk about the things where we need to be. And, uh, you know, so that, that's really, I think it's the practice habits the most important to me. All right, Nate, go ahead. How important is kind of that middle of the defense going to be with you? And that's kind of where the experience is with Momo and Jacquez and Lakia. What's well, critical. I mean, obviously from just a scheme standpoint of the guys in the middle of your defense, but, but really it starts with the communication and that those are the guys that are, are the quarterbacks of the defense. They're, they're, they're making the checks and the calls and getting guys where they need to be and really setting the tone and tempo by their demeanor and their conviction about the calls they're making. So they've got to know what the D line's doing, what the DBs are doing and communicate all those things. So, you know, that, that, that's where it starts first of all. And, and then, and then you talk about, okay, now once the ball snapped, I mean, those are naturally the guys that are around the ball the most. They're, they're right in the middle of the defense. And so we're expecting big things from those guys, and I think they're expecting big things from themselves. All right, go ahead, Nick. With the uh, COVID protocols in place, were there any things that you weren't able to do in this first day of practice that most years you would have been able to do? Or is everything just kind of the same as? You know, I, the the biggest thing is, is kind of how, how we're meeting right now, Alter, like we, we're – we're breaking up special teams at two different times because we don't have everyone in the same room at once. So, so that was a little staggered. Um, you know, obviously every, everyone, we're all, everyone's mask on the entire meeting. We're in there, we're all together and we're kind of sp spaced out a little bit, but um, I don't know. Once we got on the field, I, I don't, I don't feel there was anything different other than, other than coaches. It's hard to get used to, you're wearing a mask in practice, but you're, when you're trying to blow a whistle, that, that, that becomes complicated. I caught myself a couple of times on that, but other than that, we're, we're, we're rolling we're practicing. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, DJ, um, the newcomers, like the Canada kids and um, the other transfers, first impressions of them, what would you say the, uh, you thought about them when you saw them on the first day? Right. I mean, you can group everyone, uh, freshman, transfer, senior. You, you could really group everyone all together right now with our coaching staff because it was like it was, it was all of our first day together on the practice field, which is obviously a unique circumstance right now in August saying that. But. But that's what it is, and so um, we're, we're we're thrilled. Like I, I really feel really good about the, the guys that we have acquired. You know, however they've gotten here through through, you know, recruiting freshmen, transfer, or just our, our team of existing players. Um, you know, I, overall, like, like I said, I think our guys prepared really well. It, it was a good first day in, in those terms, and I'm excited to see us. You know, keep going and keep making improvements. All right, Nate. I guess on those COVID protocols and stuff, you see some teams wearing that, like that face shield stuff. Are you guys wearing those? I know some kids said it was like breathing in a Ziploc bag and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I've never experienced it myself wearing it. They, our guys are wearing it and, you know, they have said it. But, again, it's just one of those things that you just got to, you know, here's the deal. Let's, let's get used to it. And, um, you know, say anything else. When, when, when it's new, first off, it usually feels different. So you, you, you comment about it. But – you can get used to anything, I feel. So go get used to it. Are they fogging up stuff like that? Like, how does it actually affect them from, I guess, your point of view? It'd be a great question for the players. What I have noticed is some of the guys that, that also wear a visor. So if you have the, the, the bottom shield and the visor, you, you got a pretty good chance of fogging up there. You know, uh, the, the other ones, I mean, it's, it's still down your mouth. So even if it fogs up, I mean, you still have, have vision.